And so reading your review, like, and I think that's why I looked at any of the reviews because I was like, I don't know what to make of this. Well, yours is one of the first reviews I, I read and I was so fucking delighted, man. It made me so happy. Uh, so thank you for that. Most people come to movies to escape their lives, but people like you come here because movies make life make sense. <laughs> Happy to talk to you for the third time and about what I think may be your best film since Chasing Amy. Oh my God, I'll take that, man. I Did you review it for Joe Blow? I did, yeah. I read that review. That put wind on, in, in my sails, my friend. Many thanks for that. Um, it's I stopped fucking with reviews a few years ago and then for some reason, this movie, it mattered to me. I was like, I want to see if like, because I honestly I didn't have a lot of faith in the flick. Cause I don't curse in it. Well, I, I'm not in it at all, but there's no cursing and it's got no edge or anything like that. You know, it's a pretty simple as you can see straightforward flick about will they, won't they go to the movies and stuff. And so we submitted it to Sundance back in like last November. Cause I figured, Oh, it was a shoe. And it's a movie about making movies and loving movies. And this is my 30th anniversary going to Sundance with clerks. So this is going to work great. And Sundance passed on it. And I remember being like, Oh shit. Like, <laughs> maybe it's not what I thought it was. Maybe I suck. Maybe the internet's right. Maybe I'm just finding this out too late. So I kind of like, I wouldn't say distanced myself, but I busied myself with other things. Movie's been done for a red hot minute. So I just moved on to other things. And so reading your review, like, and I think that's why I looked at any of the reviews because I was like, I don't know what to make of this one. Generally, I know exactly going in what I got. And since I love it, it don't fucking matter, right? But this one, I was like, I don't know what they're going to make of it. So yours is one of the first reviews I, I read and I was so fucking delighted, man. It made me so happy. Uh, so thank you for that. And, and you know, it's, it is a simple flick and, and I could see though, why particularly movie fans, you know, groove on it because it's, it's you, we all see ourselves in this flick. It doesn't matter whether you were in a movie theater in the eighties or in the nineties or in the aughts or last fucking week. There is a breed of person that gravitates toward the movie theater more than the average bear. Some people treat movies like something you do every once in a while, like the way that some people treat Broadway. Like, oh, I do that every once in a blue moon. But then there are those of us for whom it's like, what's coming out this week? Like, you know, going to the movie theater when I was a kid, that was a big part of our world. That was our town center. You know, yeah. there were churches that I prayed in. One was OLPH. And the other was the Atlantic Highlands Twin Cinema, man. And my faith was stronger in the latter one, to say the least. So I like that people who love movies are grooving on the movie. Because And again, this ain't me like kicking on Sundance. Like, you know, they got, they, they got a lot of movies to program. I had my time and shit like that. But it did like fuck with my head where I was like, well, maybe it doesn't work the way I thought it, it would work in terms of like, I thought it would play like a love letter to movies. But your review and then other people who wrote about it and the tweets I've seen, it, it, it does work. And really the, you know, Sundance ain't at fault. Like that's my fault for like not believing in my shit for even 30 years in on a career, I could still be pushed back off my shit. I learned when I went to the nut house, what that's all about, man. Cause I'm a codependent people pleaser, man, who will go out <laughs> of his way to make sure everyone's happy except himself. So it was nice when when folks started seeing the movie for the for the reason I made it for the warmth and for the journey into the love of cinema, not just movies themselves, but the community that builds around movies. Now it primarily happens online and on Letterboxd and stuff. But back then we did it in real life with strangers congregated in our own personal cathedrals. And so I think there's two questions I have for you about this. Number one. Is there the possibility that you would do a grindhouse style film of just trailers, just fake trailers? And two, the final scene, that glimpse at the very end, is that indicative of what's gonna come next? It is, uh, the first one is, um, I, I don't know if I could do a whole movie with just trailers because it's expensive. You know why? This is what we learned on this one. If you look at the three trailers we made, the Sister Sugar Walls trailer has the most coverage in the most different locations that gives it the most trailer feel because a trailer is always two minutes of like two hours of a thing. And so you're seeing a lot of what the movie looks like, where it takes place. The other two trailers we have, one is a one -er, just holds mm -hmm. while a person runs toward us. And then we cut to black, put words on the screen. And the other is more of a scene 
than an actual trailer. So doing a movie about all trailers is absolutely possible, but it's cost prohibitive for some because you have to shoot way more than you ever shoot on mm. most other movies in order to communicate the art form of a trailer. Um, the the shot that happens at the tail end or in the post credit scene, the mid credit scene in the 430 movie um, came about, it wasn't in the script. I remember when we were shooting day one, uh, we opened the movie with uh, Brian David on the telephone, the first scene in the movie, but we shot it in Leonardo, which is one right around the block from Quick Stuff. So Shane mm -hmm. was our AD on both Clerks 3 and on the 430 movie, was like, we should do a shot with Brian David going past Quick Stop. I was like, I don't want to do that. Those are two separate movies, blah, blah, blah. Then we finished the flick and my cut of the movie was seven, seven minute, 77 minutes and we had to deliver an 84 minute cut contractually. So I was like, fuck. So I was like, wait, <laughs> you do a mid credit scene. And I, I, can, I can have the kids meet because there's one thing that I felt was missing when I watched the movie, which is, they're never all together at once. And then this scene would allow them in a postscript territory of like, you know, meanwhile, months later, to see how the events of the movie affected their relationship. So I needed something to build that scene around. And I was like, what about that quick stop shot that Shane was talking about? So it was nice. Like, honestly, when I put it in there, I didn't think about like how well it would play. And I've now seen it with three different audiences. And that moment happens and, and people start like cheering is really sweet. And, and I, that wasn't the intention at all, but it is kind of a secret origin moment. And in many ways, if I drop dead tomorrow, it's a, my film career is an Ouroboros because the movie, the last movie, you know, ends with preview of what is to come, which was the first movie. So in many ways, I'm hoping between now and the next movie, I drop dead. What a great way to go out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate talking to you every time, hopefully next time in person. Such a pleasure. And yes, let's do it. In Where are you? Which side of the country? Or in the middle? I'm in Chicago. Oh, beautiful, man. Chronicom, we're going to be out there next week. Come on oh, in. Nice. Chat. Awesome. That'd be great. Done and done. Thanks, Thanks Kevin. Words out. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Man.